and I'm going to share my screen. We're here for IXL. I am stationed at the high school, hiding in my office with the door closed, ignoring the phone when it's rang like 17 times, um, and still not caught up with my email. So if you have emailed me and I have ignored you, that is why. Um, so here we are. I'm going to start us off. This is our last day of blended learning PD. I can't believe it. When I looked at that matrix and said, we have to go through all that, I thought, uh-uh, no way, can't do it. Yet, we're, we're almost done doing it. Um, I couldn't come up with a title, so I just want you to use IXL because it's awesome. Um, it does so much for you and it helps your students. It helps individualize instruction. The data that you get out of it is just incredible. We have some real power users here in Mashpee, which I really should have asked them to do these trainings. I just didn't want to have to ask any of you to do any trainings on top of what you're already carrying. So maybe what I'll do once things settle down, I'll ask them to do a new tutorial. So what I'm going to do is start us off with a video that cracked me up and it's short. And then I'm going to do a video that's a little bit longer and I'll tell you why after I watch after I watch, after you watch the video that cracked me up. So if you can hear the sound once the video starts, just give me a thumbs up because that makes me feel better. And it's all about me. Wait, nope, that's the wrong one. Back page, back page. This is the one here. All right, guys, I am at 112 questions, 97 on IXL. Um, so, 146, uh, that's two, 73, so we got 73, boom, 98, 276, 276, 92 is, oh, that's not, that's not 92, that's 92, 3, all right, we are at 99, 1, 7, 9, 4, divided by 3, 9, 4, 1, 7, 9, 4, Divided by 39 is 46. 46. Are you serious? <laughs> I thought it was funny because what is she doing? <laughs> or he could be, it's hard to tell. Totally cheating, totally not doing math. There's no scratch paper next to that child. They're just looking up the answers. The part that I found to be interesting is that when they got the decimal for an answer, they did have the know-how to know that that answer didn't make sense, but they obviously didn't see that they had put the negative sign into their answer in that last one. So what I decided to do was to focus this training, um, the beginning of it anyway, the video that I'm gonna show you, on more the student side. Because I know that we see it from the teacher side, but this will also kind of show you what a student sees and what a student can do from their side. And then I'll bring you into the teacher side and we'll talk about that as well. So this next video is about 10 minutes. It's longer than I like to show, but um, I've already watched the full 10 minutes and it kept me, it kept my attention. So if it can keep mine, it hopefully can keep yours too. <laughs> and if you have questions, interrupt me. Don't be afraid to. I didn't set a specific person to interrupt me. So that means you're on your own. You have to ask your own questions. All right. Oh, that does it every time. Goes to the next slide instead of playing. Play. Are you struggling in math class? Are talks coming up in class that you never learned? Do you have an assessment coming up that you want to prepare for? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then IXL is for you. Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to make the most out of IXL. I'm hitting pause only to say that they focus on math in this video. Every school has math, KCC has math and ELA, Quashnet has math, ELA, science, and social studies, and the high school, we have a limited number of licenses for math. 
So that's why I went with this math one, but know that this is true for any of the cards. Oh, now I have to answer the doorbell. Let me hit play and then I'll do that. Let's get started. resource to improve your math skills. To get started, just complete the diagnostic test. To start the diagnostic test, all you need to do is click on diagnostic and then click on step into the arena. To make sure that you're only taking the math diagnostic, go to this top corner, click here and make sure you've selected math. Otherwise, you'll get math and language arts. Then IXL will give you two questions to choose from and it's totally up to you which ones you choose. Choose one and go ahead and get started. If you know how to solve it, obviously solve it. But if there are questions that you come across that you don't know how to do or you've never seen yet, go ahead and click I don't know this yet. If you want to take a break or just see how you're doing, you can click up here in the top left where it says see your levels and see your different levels for your overall math level. And it also broken down into different topics. Um, and you can see that some of them already have a number and some of them don't. That's because you haven't answered enough questions in the diagnostic test for IXL to know exactly what your level is. To fix that, all you got to do is step back into the arena and answer more questions. The diagnostic test is a way for IXL to learn more about your skills and what you know and what you don't know. When you first start out, according to IXL, uh, the math test will take about 75 to 80 questions uh, to complete. Uh, before IXL is able to give you an overall math level. Uh, for English, it's a little bit less, but the important thing is you don't have to do all of these questions all at once. You can do some, come back and do some more. Um, just make sure that when you are first starting out that you get this done first and foremost. It's important to remember that the diagnostic test is continuous, which means that you can take it uh, as many times as you want and whenever you want. According to IXL, they would recommend that Can you hear it? Oh. You can? No. Neither can I. Susie, we can't hear the video anymore. The volume has disappeared. Yeah, I think when she Maybe muted Maybe because her she muted herself because she's on the phone. First thing I would recommend doing is click on diagnostic and then look at some of your recommended skills. Now you might not have recommended skills for every, every topic here, but hopefully you have some. Um, and my suggestion would be to start with the ones uh, where you have the lowest level. Um, so right here for this student, their measurement score is 490. Um, and that's definitely an area that they could improve on. Maybe they have some gaps in their knowledge. So all you got to do is click on your recommended skills and you'll notice the color was blue. So when I go to, when it takes me to recommendations, if I scroll down, this one is outlined in blue. So is this, so is that, and so is that. So those are all four of those recommendations um, that the diagnostic test um, has made for this student. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of other recommendations, <clears throat> but that's because uh, this is giving all the recommendations, not just for math, but also for uh, language arts. So if we want to focus on the math, 
uh, you're going to want to click on those ones that are highlighted in blue if it was for measurement, for example. And another important thing to look at is, is what grade they're from. So this is a fourth grade uh, skill. Uh, same with this one, same with this one. Uh, but this is a fifth grade skill. So, you know, if you're just getting started, it, it might be a good idea to start with those skills that are um, probably below your grade level, um, just to make sure you, you understand them well and you can hopefully move on from them uh, pretty quickly. So all you have to do is click on one of these skills, click try it. And now you're in the learning section of IXL. IXL will give you a bunch of problems and your goal is to uh, improve on your smart score. So you start at zero and as you go, your smart, your smart score will improve. IXL has, has made a video uh, explaining exactly how the smart score works. Unlike traditional scoring, the IXL Smart Score analyzes question difficulty, answer accuracy, and consistency to pinpoint students' level of comprehension. As students answer questions, their Smart Score moves up and down between 0 and 100, and questions become harder or easier to challenge them at the perfect level. While students are still learning, the goal is to build a strong foundation. As they become more confident with the material and answer questions correctly, their smart score increases. Whenever a question is missed, detailed explanations help set students back on the right track. And once a student has proven that they have an excellent level of understanding, they move into the challenge zone and really put their knowledge to the test. Inside the challenge zone, students don't just demonstrate their skill comprehension, but true mastery. Students must work carefully, read explanations, and really focus on the problem in front of them. Questions in the challenge zone can be difficult, and it may take longer to make strides, so students should feel free to take breaks and return to the skill later. Their progress will be saved, and they can always continue practicing and improving. 90 is considered excellent, and 80 shows a strong grasp of the skill, which may be appropriate when first introducing a concept. Start with an initial goal of 80 and challenge students to grow from there. Want to see the Smart Score in action? Visit IXL.com. If you don't want to work on the recommended skills IXL has provided, you can also just learn on your own. So if you click on learning, recommendations is the first thing that comes up, but you can also click on math, and then all you need to do is either select your grade level uh, or the topic or skills that you want to work on. So grade level, I think, is probably the easiest. If, again, this student is in sixth grade, they can click on sixth grade and it's got all the skills that might be taught in sixth grade. The start skills are ones that a teacher has recommended. So you can see that this student's teacher has recommended a bunch of uh, skills for them to practice, especially it looks like on integers. And you can also see that this student has gotten scores of 100 on uh, almost all of them, uh, which is great. That means they have mastered that skill. So if you are studying something and you want a little bit extra practice, um, even if your teacher has not recommended a skill, you can come into the learning section and uh, start working on them. If you are getting ready for a new unit and you want to kind of get a, a little head start, you can also do that and think about uh, what the unit coming up is and, and get started on some of those skills. The other way you can use IXL is to work on topics we're currently studying in class. This can be especially helpful when you have an assessment coming up. So if you're doing a certain unit and your teacher might be assigning some skills to practice as homework or you're getting ready to prepare for an assessment, uh, this is a great place to go. And you can see all the skills that your teacher has recommended just by clicking uh, in this top right corner. And you can see that this teacher has recommended 51 skills. Uh, you can see ones that have already been practiced uh, for example, this one, this student has already got a, a score of 100 that they've already mastered that, that skill. Same thing here. This is a great place to find all of them. So remember, there are many different ways to use IXL to help improve your math skills. Once that diagnostic test is finished, you can click on the recommended skills that IXL has tailor made to each student to help improve your skills. You might be filling in gaps of previous knowledge that you are missing. Uh, or you might just want to challenge yourself and, and see something new.
you can click on the learning tab and choose your grade level to find things that you're studying uh, currently. Mm -hmm. It may be you want to practice things that you're studying from class. You might want to get a head start on something uh, that's coming up in the next unit, or maybe you just want to check out something that you're interested in. And lastly, you can click on the recommended skills from your teacher to work on things you're currently doing in class. This is especially helpful if you are preparing for an upcoming assessment. In conclusion, IXL is a really great resource to help you improve your math skills. Let me see if I can close my YouTube video because I have been um, not good at that lately. It's going to play again. Let's close it, close it. All right. Um, I like that video because I think it really demonstrates a teacher's expectation that the student is taking responsibility for their learning. And that might sound like a high school premise, or you're taking responsibility for your learning, but that was something that I was doing with third graders from the first day of school. And uh, we would use that phrase a lot, um, especially if it looked like I was doing all of the hard work and I had already been a third grader. I'd say, who's taking responsibility for your learning right now? And they'd always know that they would say you, meaning me. Um, so that first video of the student just filling in the numbers would be something I would show my students if it's appropriate at their grade level to say like teachers know when you're doing that. That's what we went to school for. It also shows that when they go through some of those challenging problems where they have to fill in the variables, they can't just Google that. So the questions that they can't Google the answers to are where they're going to fall apart and it's going to show their misunderstandings and the, the holes in their um, in their skill set. So being able to let students know that IXL is designed to strengthen their skills and fill in those gaps and make them stronger as mathematicians or as ELA students. Because even though I used an example of math, it's not just for math. When they do that, um, what's the word they used? Sorry, diagnostic. <laughs> the word sometimes fail me. Um, Doing that diagnostic is only for ELA and only for math. They do it once, but like they said in the video, um, IXL does recommend that they do like eight to 10 questions a week in the diagnostic just to keep their level up to date so that the recommendations that are coming in for them are individualized to where they are at in their learning journey. Um, Mary, will you share a little bit about what you did? Because I love I love hearing from teachers and how they use the IXL. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to Holly, I now have a camera on my desktop, which is much better because it's a bigger screen. Um, Jess Ryan is the one who introduced it to me. And she said, hey, it's really easy to use. Just hop on and sign up the kids. And I did. I found it very, very easy to get going on. Um, and I just put it out there to see what the kids would think. So initially I did all math and language arts skills for the entire class, not individually, mm -hmm. just to see how they felt about it. And you really quickly see kids pacing out differently, going right through and the ones that you need to give different skills. And I had one boy the year before who was so amazing in first grade math. I was actually putting him into third grade math. And that was so good for him to keep his interest in math and the excitement. And then when we were all home this spring, I really trumped it up with the parents. Um, not the right word. I really talked it up with the parents. And um, they, they had an easy time with it as well. And the kids get these, it's hard to describe, like these little ribbons that say they passed a level. Yes. And I would write them little notes and say, oh, I saw what you did. Good job. And you do not need to help them a lot. Once they're up and running, they do it so independently. So you front load things. You look at how they're doing. You can either put in skills for the whole class. If I knew we were working on something like time, I put it in for everybody. But then I could cater it to the different levels. I always kept everything first grade, but again, bumped it up for the kids that needed it. So um, it's, it's delightfully easy to use and be more than happy if you ever want to email me or call me to help you. That's awesome. It's awesome. We pay a lot of money for it. So not that I'm paying you to say that, but the more that we get off of this program, I think is the best, is 
is the better. That's awesome. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share anything before I show you a couple of things you might not know? Susie, I don't have anything to share, but I have a question for Mary. How sure. many minutes a week did your kids go on it? Um, they have their recommendations in there. I'll see if I can find them. I want to say that it's 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Every program that we use whether we pay for it or not, has like a prescription, what they recommend to get the most out of their program. And so they all those statistics swim around in my head and I'm not sure off the top of my head, but um, I will look, I, X, L, And I R, didn't necessarily follow that parameter. I had them on it at least twice a week. Um, I did more with um, phonics things for, shall I say, language arts, more heavily in math. Um, and again, for the kids that were, were soaring through math, they wanted to go on more often. But now we'll have SC math as well, so we have to strike that balance. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, you could always use ST math for math and use IXL for ELA. Yep. Um, whatever works for you, your students, your, your environment. We have these tools available to you. And, and um, Right. It could be great morning work, too, absolutely. for kids that have got the computer right there and they can hop right on and really make it um, so that maybe you can sit with other, well, not sit with other kids, but <laughs> something like that. Exactly. And I think that the, the key word that you used a couple of times was independent. Like mm -hmm. the more independent things that we have yep. that we can turn to during this time, the easier it's going to be for everybody. Absolutely. Um, Susie, can I say something? Absolutely. Um, it, it is like Mary said for you know, it's good to differentiate it in the class. And I, I think that it, that might be good for homeschooling too, because for, you know, for yep. parents that are doing remote, so if they ask for extra things to do. Yep. Um, some of my kids, even in kindergarten, already knew they could put themselves up to first grade and they could do it with siblings. So it wasn't something that they kept like getting out of. A, a sibling could go on it and then go on to the next um, grade, you know, since we weren't keeping track. But um, the one of the people in Falmouth who actually brought ST math to Falmouth, I had her, he was addicted to ST math and I had a son and he ended up being way more of an IXL fan. So <laughs> it just gives them for whatever way, like for him, it, he would get frustrated sometimes with, um, where it, he was crazy good with IXL math. That's awesome. Um, so it's. It's just two different ways of learning it, I think, of learning your, you know, and practicing. So it's really good for differentiating. So for those parents who are like, what else can we do at home? That's one of the things I'll be saying. Absolutely. Especially where you have the choice between the math and the ELA. Yeah. I don't know if the science and social studies is still free through IXL. Um, we had it for all four subjects for everybody. But IXL is expensive, and so we kind of whittled it down. We're trying to really sharpen our our availability for what we have. It so, was only the two last year. Yep, yep. So it should be it should be just those two, unless they're still offering it for free. All these COVID coupons, basically. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Anyone else want to share before I show you something that I I didn't know before today? Be like, no, we want to know now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you something that I thought was pretty cool. At first, I was super disappointed, but then I realized I was looking in the wrong place. So I am here. It's under math. Uh, your dashboard is going to look a little different than mine because I have the over, uh, overarching umbrella for the whole district. But some of this should look familiar to you. So I'm clicked on math right here on the little pyramid. And like they said in the video, you can click on grades or you can click on topics. But I wanted to explore the skill plans. And then I looked and I'm like, oh my goodness, they have all kinds of stuff in here. I could click on the links at the top, but I'm just going to scroll down. So they have like a fall power up program. They did have a summer spotlight for summer learning. So when that rolls around again, you can keep it in the back of your mind. They have it connected to the mass curriculum framework. So if you want to be able to really get in tight with those standards, you can do that. And then I started seeing the textbooks and I'm like, oh, that's awesome except for there's no everyday math. So let's not get too excited about that. So I'm scrolling back up and then I'm like, hmm, language arts. 
Again, they have the grades, they have the topics, which are different because, you know, it's language arts. And then I went to skill plans. Same thing, the fall power up, the summer spotlight, the curriculum frameworks. But then look, Wonders is in here. So let's say I'm a third grade teacher. I would click on that. And then you have all of your units here. So I'm just scrolling down to look at unit one. And it has things tied literally to what the Wonders targets are for that particular week. Is it Wonders 2020? That I'm not sure about. Literally, I've learned this just an hour ago. So you guys are going to know that better because you're becoming the experts at Wonders. But um, I thought that that was awesome because at the time I was in here a minute ago and I was looking at um, Reading Street because that's what I taught. And so I was able to go in here and say, oh my goodness, and actually this is um, their newer stuff because these this is not the first story of the first week anymore. But it's just, I think it's a great companion to what you're already doing. It looks like it does not have all the grade levels, which I know is not fair to have awesome for some and no awesome for others, but at least it's, it's something. Um, and you might not have known that already. Oh, here's Wonders 2020. Look at that. When your eyes open a little further, we have it for only two grade levels. My guess is that they're always adding content. You know, the more of us that are paying for IXL, the more money they can pay to develop stuff. So that would be my guess on that one. Um, questions so far? Susie, where exactly do I get that again? I'm, I can't get on IXL at this moment. That, that's okay. That's, uh, it's under learning. Under learning, okay. And then under skill plans. Okay. So like if you look at the fall power up skill plan for yeah. kindergarten, they have it for the first four weeks to get you up and running. And it's going to go over probably a lot of the stuff that you already do. Love it. Yeah, you're welcome. So like book parts and features, you can click on that. And then, yep, you're welcome. And then you can go ahead and go on from there. But they have it for all the grade levels. I just thought that that was awesome. Um, down here, this is very similar. You guys don't really need the test prep in the early grades, but it might in the older grades. I know that this is for all three schools and they did say in here, this is the textbooks that we were just looking at. So I just, I thought that that would be helpful for you to be able to see. And then you can look at the skill plans and actions. There's these embedded videos that will go through it probably a lot more adeptly than I do because these people work there and I don't use it every day. Um, the diagnostic is the test. It always gives them a choice when they go in. You're always going to have a choice between two questions. If they choose only math, it will only be two math questions. If they choose only ELA, it will only be two ELA questions. Or they can leave both on and they could be one or the other or both at the same time. But they only choose one at a time to make their way through the diagnostic. Um, it's kind of a big scary word for kids, but I think if you start using that language of being able to understand what you know so that you can grow and move on to what you don't know and teaching them to take responsibility for their learning, knowing that that will take years to develop that skill, but I don't think it's ever too early to, um, to start that, that expectation that you're a learner and that's your job and you're going to be awesome at it. Um, let me see the resources. There's a lot of like resources for teachers in here. The teacher toolkit that's in here. There's a lot of stuff that you can send home. Printable resources, which you can use to um, get kids excited about IXL or to reward them for the different levels that they're hitting. All of those little medals that they showed in the video, to me, they look like pineapples. That's what I thought they were, which makes no sense. It makes way more sense that they're like medals that go around your neck. Um, but those are in here. There's all kinds of professional development. There's some stuff like it was funny because when we had our PD day, I think it was two years ago now, that got basically snowed out. Um, IXL was one of the programs that they were going to charge us to do um, an, a one hour training. And they ended up reneging and saying they would do it for free, which was nice, but not all not all professional programs that we pay for offer free training. So whatever they have in there that's free, I would take advantage of that. So that's all under resources in here. 
and they have it linked up here as well, professional development. There's also an IXL, if I remember right, um, just like a lot of the other programs, there's like an IXL certification or an ambassador or whatever their special word is so that you can become an expert at it. Sometimes I like to do it not so much so I have the, the pineapple to hang on my neck, but just so that I can fill in the gaps. I said in my last session on Newzella that if you start using a tool with your students, you kind of find the same pattern of behavior. Like you figure out how you're going to do it and you do it the same way for quite a while. But if you go back and go through some of their PD, you might realize other ways that you can use a program that you're already familiar with. Like you might be missing something that's pretty cool. So all of those resources can help with that. I'm going to stop for a second to see if you have questions. Because hmm. I'm out of breath. Um, I thought there was, I'll have to look for it. Um, it, my, again, my dashboard looks a little bit different than yours. We're working on, like I said in my email this morning, the word roster right now is making me feel like an ostrich that I just want to bury my head in the sand. We have to wait until all of the cohorting and the scheduling and the assignment to classrooms is done in PowerSchool so that Sean can then start to sync it to all the programs that we use, whether it's IXL or Newzella or Seesaw or Everyday Math or any of them so that when PowerSchool talks to a program at night, they can say, oh, we have a new student. Oh, you have a new student? What's the student's name? Here's the password. Boom, they're ready to go. And who's their teacher? So the teacher is already in there and it's connected to their students. That's a lot of technology that I can't do. It's just not in my, not only not in my wheelhouse, it's, it's barely even in my brain. I understand what has to happen. I don't know how to do it. So that's Sean that's working on that. Once they are connected, I'm able to go in and I can help with almost anything. So I can go in and I can fix students. We still have to move kids to the next grade level. I can help getting teachers in to make sure your account is working. So if there's something that you need to fix or your password isn't working or whatever it is, this is all stuff from last year, but I'm able to get in there and help you with it. Um, right now, our license is all askew because we have the wrong, right now we're using, oh, we're okay right now, 817 out of 875. But right now, it's looking like K to 6, I have too many kids out of the allotted 325. So that's when we move the rosters around, that will fix that. And then your classes will be in there. That's what we're looking Can for. Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm giving everybody the right advice, but if, like inputting kids into um, everyday math and wonders and everything my team was doing that today and I didn't with children who weren't in power school and didn't have a student ID attached we did not put them in because like when we've looked up students in the past there's you know so some of this and some that. So in a free time, you have to connect those people, right? You want us to stop doing it and only put them in when we have their student ID number. Is that correct? Or is that wrong? Well, Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, but you, I don't want to say you cut out at the end, but it kind of did the slow thing and then the blah, 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 really fast thing. So you're saying, is it right to wait until there is a power school number? I'd say yes. Yeah. Okay. And did you show, did, when you were showing the wonders before, did you bring up kindergarten? Wonders. Oh, um, I brought up kindergarten for the fall when I was in learning. And then I went to still plans. I was in the language arts. Plans. Make sure that I'm in language arts, then skill plans. Um, I was in the fall power up, not in wonders. They didn't have, they have the old wonders for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, so it's not kindergarten. Okay, right. all right. And new wonders okay, for third all and right. fourth. No, don't be sorry. Okay, okay. Don't be sorry. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Thanks, Kate. <laughs> You're welcome. And then um, what I'm in here is teacher. Oops. 
there we go. Oh, the analytics is what I was under. So you have your own analytics. I can look at it at a district level. I think that our skills are crazy. I don't know if it's gonna show me, this is showing, I believe, yeah, this like school year, which really hasn't started yet. It probably includes the summer, but we're able to see the amount of usage, the amount of skills that kids are proficient at. I can then drill down and I can look at it by school and see how much time we've spent on it, like if students are hitting their goals or not. These are all pretty empty charts right now because we haven't really started the school year. Let me just answer the doorbell, there we go. Um, but during the school year, this is some pretty powerful data. Mashpee's been doing a great job at using it. And like I said, I will double check the, the prescription, what they recommend for students to use it per week. I, I wanna say it's 20 minutes three times a week. And then if it's more than that, that's awesome. But I can go in to look at each school. And then I believe also on your teacher, um, what do you call it, on your teacher dashboard, you can also see those same types of statistics for your class. You can also look at the progress and growth, um, being able to tell how your students are doing. For me, my students are basically broken down by grade level, but I'll be able to see over time how that changes you'll be able to see similar for your students instead of a whole grade level and then live school is something that's relatively new and i think that they developed this out of need during this whole remote you know dynamic online offline in person not in person learning and so it shows you and for me it's different like right now i'm looking at the entire district you'd be looking at your class but it would tell me live right now how many students are active, how many might need support. So if they're literally sitting in front of me, I can be like, yo, kid, you know, what are you having trouble with? Or if they're online, I could try and connect with them that way or know to connect with them later. It gives you a great amount of information about how they are doing live right now. Has anyone used that to be able to share it? Sorry, I'm answering a private message to get a, an account. No one has used it, so that's good. So if anything, I taught you one thing today. Um, I was, there's certain classes I've been very nervous to teach. This is another one of them because I, we have so many experts in the district. For me to teach something that other people are way better at than me is scary. But um, I would definitely check this out, especially when your kids are using it. Like, it'll be really cool as a teacher to be able to see what they're doing while they're doing it. And it will be helpful to be able to fill in those gaps. Questions? I haven't even looked at this. I'm looking at the top here. Get your toolkit with strategies and resources for a su successful fall. Um, IXL is a very, it's a huge company and has a huge number of students. You're talking thousands and thousands of students. So the amount of information they, they provide for teachers is just crazy. It's, you could dig in this site for hours and still not find everything that they put in as a resource for you. Did someone have a question? I heard it unmute. Oh, hi, Susie. It's Sarah. Can you hear me okay? I certainly can. Oh, perfect. Um, I was curious. Did you say it is okay to start importing your students in if there is a power school ID attached to them? Um, I'm saying that if you do, it's way better if the power school ID is in there. Once Sean does it automatically, that's where I say my knowledge kind of fizzles. Like I lose all of my bubbles. Um, I don't know what will happen when Sean sets it up to do it automatically. I don't know if the work that you do to set them up will not even matter. Like, boom, you'll wake up the next day, it'll look the same to you, or if it'll, I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, I, and at least give it the weekend. Don't do anything over the weekend when it comes okay. to offering, if, that, if that's an answer that, that's my best advice. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited to use IXL. I tried logging into my old account from several years ago, um, and it said it was expired, so I might need to update, you know, for a new user. Yep. Um, but presently, I do have access to David Williams' account, 
So I, I don't know what's best if I just use Davids or do, you know, create a new account for myself, but I no. definitely want to use IXL. I'm going to do it right now. You and Sean both asked me, so I'll do it right now. What it's going to do is send you an email. And if you want to jot down, it'll ask for an activation code. I did jot that down in, in the beginning, but you can repeat it for Sean if you'd like. Sure. Yep. It's the word Mashpee, all capital letters, and the number is 639. So Sean O'Connor. OR, right? Select a school, Quashnet, desired username. Oh, I didn't even fill in the whole O C O N N O R. And this needs the at. You guys can ask questions if you have any. I think Sean, oh, he's doing, okay, all of them. There we go. So Sean, when you get that, you'll use that code, MASHB, all uppercase, 639, and that will get you in. Sarah L, let's do you. Is there an apostrophe, Susie? No. And I think this morning, I did import them, but the kids were still, like my sixth grade students this year were still tagged as grade five. So I'll just do what you say and wait until over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, they're all still in the wrong grade level, which is why my numbers are all off. Alves, right? A-L-B-E-S? Yes. And you're at Quash. Yep. And myself. And all four. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Hey, Susie. Hey, what? Are we using Clever? That's a great question. Sean and I, yes, we do want to set it up. You guys at Quash won't use it the same way it's used at KCC. KCC, the device is literally open up to the Clever, like, sign-in. That's how they sign into their Chromebooks, everything. For the grades three to six set, it would be more like they go to Clever.com and they log into their school. And we're going to create it so that each teacher at both schools has their own clever portal. So you can customize it with the buttons that you want on there. We're just not quite ready for that yet. So the answer is yes, clever is coming. Um, it's just not here yet. So for now, should we, because the, um, the authentication message that I received says to log in through clever. Like yeah, I have no in. idea why it does that. Because unless Sean has connected it and I just don't know about it, um, I think you can enter that code. It just to me appeared like a, an additional option on the side. You can enter regularly as well to the left. Okay, thank you. So mine is showing up as lowercase Sean capital O with an apostrophe. Is that the? I don't know. Let me look you up again. S. O'Connor at MPSPK12, and S. O'Connor is your username right here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so I wasn't sure what, I was like, what is that going on over here with this? <laughs> okay, so just S. O'Connor. Yes. And you might have to put at Mashpee, see it up here, at Mashpee. And that's something to tuck behind your, you know, in the back of your brain if your students are having trouble logging in. Yeah. Um, they might have to add at Mashpee, not at mpsbk12.org, not that, but literally at Mashpee, because yeah. there might be an S. Alves or a Susie Brooks or a whatever the username is somewhere sure. else. So if they're having trouble, make sure that they're using at Mashpee, and that might be the, the key to unlock yeah. the mystery. John O'Connor is like John Smith. Mm -hmm. So that's good to remember. All right, it is 151, and I actually, I created a um, commercial to show during our 10 minutes, so in a second, I'm going to play that for you, but before I stop this recording, do you have any last questions about the IXL? Um, Susie. Yes. I'm trying to log, I just pulled it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I put my username in, but I'm not getting it. I didn't get a separate email for an authentication code. It so didn't ask for one? Did the email no. come in? The email did come in. Um, it says, welcome to IXL, giving you blah, blah, blah. Let's get learning, teacher resources. But no, nothing says put in the access code. So there's no link to click on? 
just the one for clever. Freddie or Sarah, did that? What did did your email look similar, or different? Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, no, I was just going to wait until the Zoom was over. But Sean, <laughs> I can come sit with you and we can figure it out together in a couple minutes if you'd like. Okay. And I know Brady got in, so she uh, might have she might have the answers. When I logged into David's account this morning, it looked like I could just log in on the left, but it gave that clever option or you know two additional technology option. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully we'll figure that out. So the, um, the video that I'm going to share is actually, uh, I keep calling them commercials, these 10 minute tech tips. This one's coming at you from Katie O'Brien. Let me first stop this recording. Stop recording. <laughs> 